How do I, 23F, tell my friend, 23M, that he is oversharing without hurting his feelings? Sorry for formatting, I'm on mobile. So I met my friend through work about a year ago, and we've since become very close. We hang out every Wednesday for socially distanced trivia and have a lot in common. Besides the fact that he loves to text and will text me constantly. This is where the issue comes in. Sometimes the stuff he texts is valid, to which I will reply, but most of it is absolutely inconsequential. One day he texted me that he got a new speaker and was going to try it out but spread it out into like six different texts about this speaker. He will text me six or seven times before 7.30 am, which wakes me up in the morning. He texts me random thoughts spread out into several messages and then suddenly changes the topic and sends another round of texts about a different topic. Sometimes I get overwhelmed and just can't reply to everything so I don't, and it makes me feel awful. Now I understand that some people are like that, they like to over communicate. But I am not that way, nor do I enjoy texting at all. I have never been a texting person, even my family recognizes this. I'm just not sure how to let him know and approach the situation in a way that won't hurt our relationship. I very much value him as a friend and enjoy hanging out. I just don't necessarily want to be informed about everything he does slash buys or everything that he's thinking. How do I let him know in a way that doesn't hurt his feelings? Too long didn't read. My friend texts me constantly about everything happening in his life and I don't know how to tell him to tone it down without hurting his feeling or our relationship. Also not a texting person here. I mute all of my message notifications across all apps, except for my BF and sister. For everyone else, I reply at my own convenience. I treat texting like snail mail or email that I reply to periodically and not like a back and forth constant conversation. People in my life know to call me if they really need something. Those closest to me are people that have similar communication styles and social needs, and we're the type of friends that people pick up where they left off. If you value this friendship, maybe calling him when you're free and saying, hey, I'm not big on texting, but I wanted to get back to you to catch up. Would be a good idea. You can spend half an hour talking on the phone having the same conversation that would have taken you hours over text. This allows you to maintain the friendship while finding a compromise that probably suits both of your communication styles better emo. That's a good idea. I never thought to call him so he can get all of his thoughts out at once. I'll try that. Set your phone to where only certain people can text you during the hours that you sleep, and then just respond to texts in a way that makes sense to you. You don't have to respond to everything, or all the time. And if you don't respond to something, he probably will stop texting you about that thing anyway. If he makes a comment about it just say oh yeah. I'm not much of a texting person so I don't always reply to everything if it doesn't seem urgent. Sounds like he has a crush on you. Oh man, I've got a similar problem with my friend. I'm pretty sure he has ADHD books even in person his thoughts and behavior is all over the place. He would literally send 20 messages at a time and each message would be unrelated to the previous. This also made me feel overwhelmed as my brain just cannot process all of that at once, so I just reply to what's shorter, embarrassed smiley face. I have told him, yesterday actually, I said could you please limit your texts to at least 5 at a time because it gives me anxiety having so many MSGS pop up on my screen. He agreed, and has been obliging but I see it increasing again. I also am not a good texter, I only text my boyfriend, but I know if I should not reply to my friend and he sees me online he would get cocky. Big agree. To be honest, I see myself in ops friend, Gatling texts and jumping from topic to topic. It's definitely ADHD. It blows my mind that people send paragraphs, I text how I speak, and send a text when I finish a thought or a sentence. I also know that several of my friends have anxiety and keep saying I won't always be able to respond because I'm fighting my own demons, but please keep reaching out, so I don't assume silence means stop talking. Maybe I'm sending paper airplanes out into the void, but I'd rather that than having friends think that I've given up on them. Hey, 
You might have noticed, I'm not a huge texter. I really prefer chatting in person. Can you save your updates for when we hang out? It gives us more to talk about anyway when we see each other. Remember that the biggest and best advocate for what you need is you, and that communication goes both ways. You're sitting here fretting over how to not hurt his feelings, meanwhile he's already, unknowingly backslash, intruded on yours. Wouldn't you want to be told if you were bothering your friend? And yes you'd feel a little upset and guilty but you're supposed to when you find out you've been bothering someone, and a mature adult will be able to say oh yeah, that's cool, no problem and work with you on some kind of compromise. GF, F slash 28 has somebody named Pappy in her in her phone? What should I do? Advice? GF, F slash 28 has somebody named Pappy in her in her phone? What should I do? If you'd like some context, Mm, pretty much it's my, m slash 30, partner for over a year. She is from a different country, moved here 10 years ago. We are together but long distance, 3 hours, for the time being. The guy is from her native country, but lives in Europe. I asked who he was and she said a close family friend. They've known each other their whole lives. Almost like cousins. We are both in North America. Yes, it is complicated lol. But the last time we were together I just noticed the guy's name when she texted him. And asked who it was, close family friend back home etc. She also called him and wished him a happy birthday when we were hanging out. Funny thing, is that she made the call at like 930 or something our time, knowing it was like 233 am his time and he still picked up and they had a conversation. They speak French, so I didn't understand it, but yeah, curious how to approach this one. TL, doctor, why would someone have a person named Pappy in their phone? I don't see much of concern here. She answered when you asked who it was, did it seem like she told you the whole story? She is clearly comfortable calling him when you're there, which I don't think she'd do if there was something sketchy going on. Sounds like they have a close relationship, like family. If she knows he would be up partying on his b-day, or if she texted first, phoning late is no biggie. Is your gut telling you something different? What does pappy mean to you? This is so culturally specific, and she's the only one who can tell you what this means. If you don't trust what she's said, how is surveying randoms going to help? I know that we've sexualized the term daddy so much that it's hard to hear a derivative being used as a nickname without going there. I have a friend from college everyone called Popper, it wasn't in reference to his sexual prowess. Without knowing more information, there's no way to tell for your situation. It speaks more to the fact that you don't trust her at her word and you've been dating for a year. Just tell her that hearing the nickname Pappy for a male friend makes you curious and you would like more information to put your mind at ease. Which is like really fucking gross if you think about it. I am Latino and my grandma and aunts call every male who is a friend of the family or any older like mid-twenties up person in the family pa or Pappy and it would weird me out if someone implied they were all having some type of big orgy or something. Words have different meanings and it would be weird as fuck if someone with a pet play fetish just kind of assumed someone was fucking their dog every time they said good boy or something so like this shouldn't be any different. The bedroom version of a word is definitely not the first thing you should assume without proper context. Well, you asked and she answered. You obviously don't trust her to tell you the truth. Has she done something to earn your mistrust or is this your insecurity talking? It could just be the person's nickname. I don't see proof of a problem in the premise. I'm open to living in a different city than wife for an amazing job. Wife is not. Update, thanks so much everyone who commented. I honestly wasn't expecting to get this many responses to this post. After sifting through them, I disregarded the two extremes, one, just divorce her if you want this so badly. Not that simple, I still love her and want to spend my life with her. We are just struggling to communicate on this issue. Two, suck it up and just stay with this job. You agreed to this already. This situation is causing me mental anguish. 
and I think most of this stems from not feeling heard and my thoughts and emotions not being validated by my wife. I know it's not just on her, it seems like I'm changing the rules and or being irresponsible with finances and or abandoning her. She's struggling to express herself to me. I'm struggling to validate her thoughts and emotions. The majority of the responses suggested couples counseling which I think is a good idea. It's more a communication issue than anything. We have different priorities and don't understand the other's point of view without getting emotional. Third-party mediator to help us understand each other and communicate sounds like exactly what we need. I actually just suggested this to her and she said she thinks it would be a good idea. We are fortunate enough to be in a situation where we both have access to several sessions of free couples counseling. Me through an anonymous employee assistance program at work, and her through her university. We are both reaching out today to figure out how to get started. Thanks again. Original post, I'll try to keep this concise but there's a lot of factors so I may ramble a bit. I, am 24, am an engineer living in a great house in a college town with my lovely and amazing wife. F23. We met in college, moved in together a year ago, moved into a great house over the summer and got married in November, four years after we first met. She is in professional school here until summer 2022, a key detail, because she has a military scholarship, which is awesome and allowing her to graduate debt-free, a rare feat in her field. We are at the whim of the US government as to where they send her when she graduates. She means the world to me. I can't imagine spending my life with anyone else. We have different personalities, hobbies, and interests but agree on most of the big things in life, religion, politics, money, children, family, etc. We trust each other completely and have pretty strong relationship and agree that divorce is not an option. We meant what we said when we agreed to get married and committed to working things out. Disclaimer, the divorce is not an option thing only applies to a situation where neither spouse is abusive. I am by no means saying I believe anyone married to an abuser should stay with them. I graduated in December of 2019, and was unemployed for a couple months until I found a job last February. I was very fortunate to find this job and I am grateful to have it, especially during the pandemic, but I despise it. It is in an industry that I find incredibly slow moving, boring and aggravating, I feel like I didn't need to go to school for 5 years to do this, and I can't stand the people I work with either. The company depends on its employees to work unpaid overtime, salaried, exempt positions, and I am struggling in my current role. My co-workers and supervisors seem to think I've been here for 5 years and not less than one and get frustrated with me when I try to ask questions. The reason I hate it the most is that I desperately want to break into another field, but there are no options in my desired field anywhere near here. Also, I love using tools and doing hands-on work, my happy place is my garage workshop, and this job is 100% desk-based and I'm going crazy. I feel like I am forgetting the useful things I learned, and everyone I talk to who works in this industry seems to struggle hardcore escaping it, as experience here is not valued highly at all by other industries. I am worried that I am severely damaging my long-term career prospects every week I spend here. I decided to get my master's degree in the field of engineering that I want to work in. Last fall I started online school at a good university. I am taking one class a semester and enjoying it but it will be three to five years by the time I finish and it has a big effect on my resume. I found a part-time, contract job at a startup in my town, and after lots of discussion my wife nudged me towards taking it. I love it. I get to do hands-on work in a small team, making a cool product. I am given a lot of responsibility, but they love when I ask questions and they are often impressed and appreciative of the work I do. However, they could not afford to hire me full-time, as they operate off grant. I am currently working 10 hours a week with them, in the evenings 3 nights a week after I finish my usual full-time job. It's a lot, working 50 plus hours per week, and taking a tough engineering class. There are a handful of amazing job opportunities in particular that I have been applying to, and receiving interest back from the companies. They are for hands-on roles, in my desired field, and with much smaller teams, 
who I thrive working with, rather than large companies. The kicker is that none of them are within three hours of where we are now. We have talked about this before, and while I am totally okay with living apart from my wife four nights a week, she is not. I got my current job and then it kind of became a moot point, until I started job searching again several months ago. My thought process is this, I am open to doing this now, so we can both have fulfilling careers and live together in the future. This is not about more money or climbing the corporate ladder for me, it's about an opportunity to break into the field I love so I can work in that field while living with her where the military sends her later, instead of being stuck in an industry I hate. I would not be proposing this if there were not a set end date, summer 2022, or we had kids, I wouldn't leave her with the extra responsibility or miss time with my family, that's what life is all about. I will be an easy driving distance, and I'm willing to do all the travel so we can be together from 9pm Friday to 5am Monday. Additionally, I have found that I base a lot of my identity around the things I do. This may not be the healthiest thing, but it's very hard for me to just let go of what I spend 8 hours a day doing and focus on the parts of life that aren't work like she has suggested. I may be a bit naive, but I'm not ready to admit that people have to spend a third of their life in utter misery. I think we have a strong relationship and can definitely survive this for a little more than a year, and not have our relationship significantly damaged. Finally, I would be totally willing to do this if the roles were reversed. I want her to be happy and successful, and I hope she wants me to be too. We just recently discussed the possibility of her spending an extra three years in the military for a great career opportunity, living in a city that I'm not thrilled about. But I'm totally okay with it because it would make her happy. Aside, she wants to build a strong marriage at the beginning. She doesn't want us to spend four nights apart a week, and miss out on the usual bonding that happens. She had a bad long distance relationship a few years before we met, and doesn't want it to happen again. She also doesn't necessarily understand how miserable I currently am, and we've gotten in a few fights where I've been a bit of a baby and broke broken down out of frustration trying to express it to her and she's called me dramatic. I am struggling with not resenting her for this, because I know that's a dangerous thing. I am perfectly willing to sacrifice almost 9 years of freedom regarding where we live just to be with her because I love her, and definitely making career sacrifices to do so. She promises after she's done with the military we can move wherever I want, but I am afraid I won't have career options because I am digging myself into a massive hole professionally. I am terrified of not ever being able to break into my desired field, and always being stuck in jobs I hate. She doesn't fully understand this fear and thinks I'm overreacting, but she doesn't know much about engineering jobs. If anyone has any advice on the situation, or how to communicate about this situation better, I would greatly appreciate it. TL slash doctor, I, M24, am stuck in a job I hate and I am worried is destroying my career prospects. My wife, F23, is in professional school and can't move until she graduates in 2022. She has a great military scholarship and we will be moving for her work for 4 to 7 years post graduation. I am interested in much better jobs 3 to 4 hours away from where we live now that I think will help me get jobs I don't hate in the future. My wife is against me moving away for the weeknights. I am starting to resent her for it and we are struggling to calmly and clearly express our feelings and motivations with each other.